I got this email from Glenda Glad of Algebra, Alabama. Glenda asks, how can I make a Captivate project that does mathy stuff to numbers my learners enter into text entry boxes? Cool question, Glenda. P.S. What's wrong with your voice? Well, if you must know, Glenda, I swallowed a gummy bear and choked on it while reading a Tanya Hurley novel. Let's take a look at today's example. I'll preview the project, and we'll be able to see it. In this project, learners enter numbers into each of these fields. The numbers are the amount they wish to spend out of a total dollar value. Let's enter 20,000 in the first field. I'll press the tab key, and when I do, notice the field on the bottom updates to change the amount of money they have left. Let's enter another value, and press the tab key again. Each time the amount is updated. All right, that's awesome. Keep going. Uh-oh, we spent more money than we were allowed. The project senses that the money exceeded the allotment and automatically alerts the user, then resets back to the original page so that the entries can go in again. Now we'll do it again. This time, we'll do it right. Maybe we won't even put money in that field. All right. Now we've spent an amount of money that's acceptable, we can check our answer. The project takes them to a summary page that tells them how much money they earned or lost on each of the five investments. That's the project. Let's find out how it works. All right. So this project works with advanced actions. Look under the project menu and then look under advanced actions and you'll find the three scripts here under existing actions. Those three scripts are reset slide. This one just initializes all the values of variables. Don't worry if you don't know what a variable is. I'll talk about that in a second. The next script checks for the validity of the entries that the users make. That's what's checking to see whether they spent too much money or not. The last script runs the numbers. It tests everything in the end and determines how much profit or loss was actually made. All right, for now, let's pause and take a look at those variables. I click here on the variable button and use the user type. That will show me all the variables that I've created in this Captivate project. Now there are 26 variables, but really it's not that complicated. Notice how each of these has five in a row with numbers one through five. Those correlate to the five different entries, the five different text entries that the users make. So if you look, there's percentage, total, total earned, up, down, and value, all right? And then there's one additional variable called remaining cash. Percentage is going to store the amount of percent of uh, profit or loss that we, the author, decided should happen for any one of those text entry boxes. Remaining cash is going to remember how much money the user has left after what they've spent total is actually going to sum everything up, even though we don't use that number in the project. Total earned is how much profit we made, so it's the initial investment times the percentage of profit or loss. Up down is a special one. It actually stores a word. Remember on the last page how it says you lost this much money or you earned this much money? Well, up down stores whether you lost or earned, it's important to have that word to make the sentence make sense. And then finally, value represents the amount of money that the user, the learner, typed in the box. You can think of variables like placeholders, like uh, cookie jars. Those cookie jars are going to hold special things. Most of our cookie jars here hold numbers, but the up-down actually holds words. It's really easy to create a new variable in Captivate. You just open the for variable menu, and there you click on Add New. When you do, see how the name field is highlighted? 
that's where you'll put the name of the new variable. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. And then you click on Save. Notice how the new variable appears down below. Now, Captivate supports two different kinds of advanced actions. The first kind is called a standard action. And in a standard action, you can just execute commands one after the other. Our first action, Reset Slide, is a standard action. See how everything goes in a nice little list? It tells the system what to do. First, it assigns value to a variable. It assigns the variable remaining cash with the value 100,000. That sets the default amount of money that we're allowed to spend. Let's go down here to the bottom and see what happens, what it's like to set one of those variables. We just click here in the bottom box and automatically a little box appears. Now notice the red part. The red part means that we haven't yet finished this action we'll choose from the drop down menu something we want to do now notice those look familiar i could jump to slide or show or hide just like i can in the captivate interface but there are some that i don't see there here i can assign a value to a variable i click assign and automatically captivate says oh which variable do you want to assign something to which cookie jar do you want to put something in click on the select variable then scroll down to find the user defined actions look there they are all right now i can find the user defined action that represents remaining cash let's find that one remaining cash is here i click on it and then I can fill it up. Now look at this menu. It says I can fill it up with a variable. That's right. I can assign a cookie jar to hold another cookie jar. Oh, that's cool. Well, in my case, I want to assign remaining cash to a literal value. Literal just means that it's something I can type in. Now I could type in something like donuts, but that wouldn't be very useful. Instead, I probably want to type in something like a number, like 100,000. Okay, now my value of remaining cash is 100,000. Okay, all right, cool enough. You can also do things like hide or jump to slide using the standard actions. Now, sometimes you want to do something more complicated than just run through actions one at a time. Sometimes you want to assign an action that is conditional that's conditional now we do things that are conditional all the time in daily life for example we might decide whether or not we want to go outside with an umbrella or not if the sky is blue don't take your umbrella else take your umbrella that's a conditional action and it works the same way when we create advanced actions in captivate let's look at this one this one checks for valid entries now this one is a special case so I'll skip that for now I'm gonna to go to this check sub one okay now notice this funny little interface across the top this actually allows us to have more than one conditional action combined all together under a single action that's cool because I need to check each of the text entry boxes one at a time and then I need to do something based on what is in those boxes remember what happens when we type in a box automatically when we type in a box captivate senses whether or not we've gone over our spending limit right and it also sets the value of the text at the bottom of the field to add up the new number how does that happen well let's take a look here under check valid entries we go to check sub one all right now what it does is it says if all of the things in this list are true now I only have one thing in this list true right but it's okay so if remaining cash remember that's a variable that holds how much money is left is greater or equal to value one wait a minute so if this variable remaining cash we think that might be a hundred thousand right now is greater than or equal to okay if a hundred thousand dollars is more than or equal to 
value one. Now remember, value one is whatever the user typed in the text entry box. The user could type 110,000. If they did, that would be less than remaining cash. But the first part of our script is actually worried about the opposite. If it's greater than, okay, that means if we have plenty of money. Notice what happens next. Next, we run a special kind of action called an expression. An expression just means a math problem, right? So we add an action called an expression, and in that expression, we perform this math. We say remaining cash, now remember that's 100,000 here, but it could be any number, equals remaining cash. Now that might seem funny, but think about it for a second. What we're going to do is we want to say that the end result of the problem is 100,000 minus some value, the number that the user typed in. So if the user typed in 20,000, we want to say 100,000 minus 20,000. But we have to remember to put it back in the cookie jar. That's what this does. The cookie jar is equal to the cookie jar minus the amount that they typed in. Make sense? So the cookie jar is now going to hold a value of 80,000 because it was 100,000 minus 20,000 equals 80,000. Now there's only 80,000 left in the cookie jar. Make sense? Awesome. Now look at this little else button down here. This is a special one. Sometimes you just want to say, if this is true, then do something. But sometimes you want to say, if this is true, then do this. But if it's false, do something different. I clicked on that else button to see what happens when it's false. Okay, When they don't have enough money, show oops. That's the little dialog that says you've made a mistake. Then run another expression. That expression is the same thing. Remaining cash equals remaining cash minus the value they typed in. That figures out how much they overspent by. And then we do something cool. We jump to slide two. Slide two just does a couple of things. One, it lets us have some time to reset the original slide. Two, it gives us a chance to let the user look at the oops message for a few seconds. Now our other conditionals inside this same action simply do the same thing but with value 2 and then with value 3 and then with value 4 and then finally with value 5. So they're iterating through each of the text entry boxes to check and see what happens. Now the cool part is you get to decide when Captivate should call this particular action, when it should say, hey, do that stuff that I told you to do on condition. Okay, Let's close this and take a look at when Captivate is calling those things. I'll click on the text entry box. When I do, notice in the property inspector, the text entry box is set up not to retain text. That's really important. That way, when I loop around to slide number two and come back to slide number one, the text entry box will be empty. I still have to clear out the variable too, but the important part, the part the user sees, that's cleared out by just unchecking the retain text option. Now look down below. Here we can see that there's a variable associated with this text entry box. That means whatever gets typed in the text entry box becomes assigned to the variable. You use this magic little button here to choose which variable or create a variable. You can also use the drop down menu to choose which variable you'll assign to the text entry box. Now look at the next part. On focus on focus okay that means that when you press the tab key or you click on one of the other boxes it will execute the advanced action that's because we chose to execute an advanced action on that focus event now look here what advanced action do we do well we do the advanced action check valid entries hey that's the one we were just working on so that means that every time the learner clicks on one of these boxes or use the tab key to move to the next box, then automatically it will check for the valid entries. Wow, well that means that if they spend too much money, it'll go to the oops slide, just like we saw. 
And it also means that whenever they spend any money, this bottom piece that uses remaining cash the variable will update because wherever you use a variable like this inside of a text member in Captivate, the value of the variable automatically appears. You don't have to program anything. You just have to put that variable in. But wait a minute, Dr. P. How do we put a variable in a text field? Check this out. I'll just edit the text. And here, I'm just going to delete that little piece. Now it says you have dollars remaining to spend. Oh, I want to put a variable in there. No problem. I go to the property inspector and look right there. Insert. I can insert special characters, but I can also insert a variable. I'll click on it. When I do, oh, look at that. I can select whatever variable I want, and I can choose remaining cash. OK, that'll work. Oh, wow, it put it in there for me. Hey, you know what? That's just the word with dollar sign, dollar sign, and then dollar sign, dollar sign after it. Did you know you can type that yourself if you want to? Yeah, it's that easy. Awesome. So, where do the other scripts run? We'll take a look. When we get to the first slide, this is very common. Choose the slide itself, and then look on Enter another execute advanced actions what's it do it resets the slide using the script that we saw earlier remember that script that just goes through and sets all the initial variables simple right and what about that last script well that one's used on the last slide right notice that when you enter the last slide it runs the numbers running the numbers just changes up down to the right variable depending on whether they earned money or lost it. And then total earned is the amount of money that they earned on each of those investments. So if we look at the run the number script, we'll see that it's just a conditional script that's evaluating whether they made money or lost money. Look, here's the first condition, profit one. That must line up with the first text entry box. If percentage one is more than zero, Hey, wait a minute. That means that when we set the percentage values, some could be negative numbers and some could be positive. That's how we know between lost and made money. And then look, if it was more than zero, if you made money, then assign up down with earned, the word earned, just the word earned. Isn't that simple? And then an expression, total earned one, equals the value of one, how much they typed in, times percentage one, how much we assigned as the profit or a loss. And then another expression. This expression we don't even use in the project, but I just threw it in so you'd know. The total value is equal to the amount they invested plus the total amount earned, right? So that'll be all the money they have left at the end. I figured it might be fun to have uh, uh, you know, a number that sums up how much money I have now. Maybe it's more than 100000 or maybe it's less. Did I gain money overall or did I lose it? So we could calculate that too. Look at the else. The else is if it was less. If this was a big loser, then we're going to replace the up-down variable with the word lost. And the expression here is the same, right? Total earned is value 1 times percent 1. That's because when you multiply times a negative percent, <laughs> you're going to get a negative number, OK? All right, so it's just that simple. See, it doesn't have to be intimidating at all. I hope you'll try some advanced actions now. Check the blog for all of this information, including the file that you can download and study the script, and more tips from me about how to do advanced actions. Until next time. Keep rocking, rock stars.